All right. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Mark Fiquez, and you're listening to the Ballpark Hunter podcast. With me today, direct from Auckland, New Zealand. Yes, Auckland, New Zealand, is CEO of the Auckland Tuataras, Mr. Regan Wood. Regan, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. So hopefully I can tell you some funny stories, entertain a few people, and, and yeah, we might pick up a couple of fans along the way. You know, I told people today when I announced I was interviewing you on Twitter to follow you. I joined one of those Twitter vines, which are kind of have pros and cons. You're all mm. day sending out stuff, but I was keeping track. It looked like you picked up about eight new subscribers in the first couple hours. So nice. Man, yeah. That's good. There we go. We're yeah. on fire right now. You're on fire. Another eight and we're good to go. Yes. And I'm telling you, I was looking at some of your hats. It's not that much more to get a hat from New Zealand to the United States than it is from Trenton, New Jersey to the United States uh, for really? the shipping. Co- yeah. I, some of the shipping costs here from one state to another, it's, it's like, they just make up their prices. Uh, I, I ordered a hat from New Jersey to Indiana. Shouldn't it be more than five bucks. It was $12. I said, it's more than just as about the same price as the hat. And then I, I think I looked at you guys, or maybe it was the Sydney blue Sox. It was, $17 to ship. I get it paying $17 to ship a hat from Australia, but $12 to ship a hat five states over, uh, three states over, that's insane. Yeah, insane. the world is insane. It's going All crazy. Right. I hear you. Okay, so Regan, definitely glad you're on here. I'm actually speaking on this end on Friday. You're speaking here on Saturday morning. So um, who cares? We're going to have a good time here. So, Regan, being down in uh, New Zealand, I don't think of New Zealand as a big baseball uh, country. How did you get involved with the, the game? Uh, well, yeah, you're right. When I was growing up, there was no baseball. And there was no real ESPN in New Zealand. Uh, you know, and, and the only you get a book and you read about Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle and so forth. There wasn't, there was no, you know. And then later, you get a Sports Illustrated if you're lucky enough to find one. And oh, wow. The guy, Dwight, Dwight Gooden. Oh, the doctor. Daryl Strawberry, right, and all that, and Gary Carter and so forth. But anyway, I, I grew up, we play softball in New Zealand. Fast pitch softball. Uh, it's one of those things. Uh, it was introduced back where a Canadian guy turned up at the Ford factory here in, uh, in Wellington. Uh, he was a little bit older, so he was like, we should play softball. You know, I don't have to run as far. And being Kiwis, we don't like to spend too much money. So I thought, wow, we can get two softball fields for one baseball field. This is brilliant. Let's do that. So softball took off um, and, and it moved from that sort of social to quite a, a competitive level. Uh, and baseball, you know, the sporting guys turned up in 18 something around the 93 or whatever it is. Oh, so uh, they had a couple of goes tour. at it. Yeah, they've been going for it. So I, I personally, I went overseas to play baseball because I thought I was uh, growing up in a small town in New Zealand. I thought all I need to do is apply myself and I'll, I'll be good. There's no problem. Here we go. Well, you quickly, the good thing about sports, you quickly realize where you stand uh, very quickly. Well, if you've got two eyes, uh, one mouth, two ears, you quickly realize that, you know, where you stack up. Um, so they used to talk about my raw potential, my raw potential, mm. I think was quite complimentary. It was good when you were 18 or 19, but when you're 23 and they talk about raw potential. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, so, so yeah, I, I went seeking riches and form, uh, uh, sorry, and gold uh, that I thought I was going to be the, the first major leaguer from New Zealand. Wow. Never playing baseball. Uh, deluded, yes. Uh, I appreciate that, but I, I do like to giggle at myself. <laughs> so I went to Australia uh, and uh, there was a guy called David Nielsen that was there. So I was in Brisbane and there's this David Nielsen character. And if you look him up, you'll go, you quickly realize, you know, why I realized I wasn't good enough. Uh, and, and Dave was with the, um, the Brewers at that stage. He'd been signed. Uh, he was this, you know, 17 year old, you know, he would describe something like this 17 year old kid that just used to hit the shit out of the ball, right? And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, he's a lot better. <laughs> so that's the difference, right? That, that, that bellwether, uh, that's the difference. So it was good. Anyway, so I quickly then went, right, well, I'm not going to be a professional baseball player, so I better apply myself. So I started working, carrying on. Anyway, um, a few years ago, Baseball New Zealand, they've been doing it for about 30 years uh, with, with relatively good success of baseball. There's a couple of guys signed with the Phillies and the Mets and the, and the Braves. So they've done a really good job from that point of view, but they decided – that they would get a team in the ABL. And a guy called uh, Ryan Flynn was the driver behind that with another guy called uh, Vaughn Weaver. That, and I said, you guys are crazy. Why are you doing that? The level in Australia is really good. 
you're going to lose a whole lot of money. So they're like, yeah, but we're doing it anyway. So mm-hmm. um, they ended a team. And, uh, you know, I watched for the first little while and then couldn't help myself but get involved. And, Definitely. and here we are today. So, you know, we're, we're, we're a proud baseball nation now. <laughs> That's yeah. You got, you got to start somewhere. I remember when this country was terrible at soccer and we didn't even have a professional league. It had folded and they made fun of soccer players at my high school. So it's um, you got to start somewhere. So why not, why not be, why not be part of the early pioneering success? Well, yeah, and that's the hard bit. When you start anything from new, yeah. you know, there's a lot of ground to break, a lot of rocks to break and so forth and move. And, uh, you know, that's the difficult thing. It's a lot easier when you just come in and you've already got, you know, Yankee Stadium on your, on your doorstep. So Australia has some really good fields. So, you know, we had to build a field uh, in Auckland. We had to convince the council that they'd take a rugby stadium uh, and retrofit it and, uh, and turn it into a, uh, a baseball stadium which, you know, is a, is a difficult uh, concept for um, people in New Zealand to f- figure out, you know, wh- why, would you, why would you change a perfectly good rugby stadium and play <laughs> baseball? We don't even play baseball. And you're like, yeah, just watch. See how we go, boys. Yeah. Well, no, I saw that. I saw the transformation of North Harbour Stadium. Uh, they actually had to remove several rows of seating uh, in what you guys have uh, in, in the left field. And you created something called the Teal Monster, which uh, is based off the Green Monster at Boston's Fenway Park. And I'm thinking, wow, they're, they're really getting into this. They're taking away seating that they're not bringing back, correct? That's gone for good. That, that's gone for good. Okay. Um, they may, you know, in the event of a major event, yes. we've got the FIFA Women's World Cup on next year in New Zealand. Um, they may bring in temporary seating for the, yeah. the outfield, but but no, it's gone. Boom. Yeah. And, and yeah, we're talking about building bullpens now into the right field. There's a right field bank, and I want to build those bullpens, kind of stack yes. them up a little bit, part of that theater. And they're like all about it, going, yep, great, no problem. They said, what happens in winter? I said, well, you can sit there and watch rugby if you want to in the bullpens. But in the summer, you know, it's part of our theater. And they're like, yeah, let's, let's talk again on Tuesday. We've already given them concepts talk on Tuesday and start planning for it. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you look at the stadium, it's, it, you know, for us, it'd be a classic soccer football stadium covered mm-hmm. grandstand and behind the third base uh, left field line is just open space that I think you guys use for concessions that I see or kids rides. No, yeah, it's a kid. So Kelly sports, which they run this program and it's about kids just playing sport, right? Playing not, not, not competitive, but playing. Uh, very social. So they come in and you got face painting, bouncy castle, throwing baseballs, throwing watermelons, you know, all that sort of bull rush and, and the kids. So, so as a dad, you turn up there, you drink your craft beer, you tell mum that you're babysitting the kids and they go down there and play yeah. for an hour and a half and you come home and how was your day? Oh, baseball was really good. You know, who won? The kid goes, oh, I don't know. No. I had my face painted, which is perfect. You know, absolutely yeah. perfect. And one of those things that we had what, why that works for us, and yeah, we've, we've stolen ideas from everywhere, but why that works for us is we lost uh, in the semifinal, and it was, you know, two years ago, and we lost. And the next day, because we've got those players from the Rangers and the Padres, and they're on, they're on the plane out of here straight away to head back to America. And there's about 150 kids turned up the next day on the Sunday. I'm like, yo, boys, what, what are you guys doing? They're like, well, we're coming to the baseball. And I'm like, well, <laughs> There's no baseball today, boys. And they went, why not? You play on Sunday. I went, no, because we lost last night. And they went, oh. And I said, did you come? They went, yeah, yeah, we came last night. They didn't care. They just come along, right? So, yeah. so when you're going, yeah, that, that's just part of that. But we have to work hard, right? We're not a baseball. We don't have history of baseball. Yes. We don't have that baseball IQ. So we can create the best of around the world and take that from rugby, cricket, baseball, basketball, and say, this is what baseball is all about in New Zealand. You have to stand in the fifth innings singing Sweet Caroline, right? Yeah. Thank you, Boston. I appreciate that. They, they do that everywhere. Every sporting event that I go to, it doesn't matter if it's major league or some small little high school, they're playing Sweet Caroline. They, we only play seven innings in New Zealand. So... Uh, so we do it in the fifth innings. Not like you guys that do it in the sixth. Really? Innings. So the, the whole league yeah. plays seven ABL? No, uh, just we do in New Zealand. So uh, now, why yeah, is that? And you're like, 
Baseball's boring when it's all said and done, right, guys? Come on. We need to jazz this up. Let's go. We need a circus, you know. Yeah. You look at Jesse Cole, he'll tell you we need a circus, right? We're in the entertainment. Oh, game. Jesse so, Cole. Uh, this yeah. guy's name is world recognized. Oh, I've, 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 I've been to see them, right? Oh. So, if, yeah, I've flown all the way over there to go and have a look at what they do. And uh, look, there's plenty of Jesse Coles and, and yes. different, you know, uh, they just didn't have the publicity and whatever it is. But there's a lot of people that get where they sit you know we're in the entertainment game i don't i don't have the elite athletes that major league baseball does yeah. right so people are happy to sit down and watch the elite athlete play but if he's not their elite athlete they want to be entertained you know i don't know about you but you know i want to be entertained no no you're absolutely right and, and speaking of jesse cold uh i think most people who are listening uh the savannah bananas uh are probably one of the most entertaining summer collegiate ball clubs in the United States, I mean, Savannah was left for dead as a minor mm -hmm. league town. Uh, the New yeah. York Mets are like, we're out of here. Your stadium's too old. I actually, actually went to uh, went there on my honeymoon, but it was yeah. before the bananas arrived. I actually have a YouTube video of me walking around the stadium saying, this is a nice, nice ballpark. Why would you want to leave? And yeah. uh, Jesse comes in and somebody calls it the bananas and yellow outfits. And they're throwing babies in the air and they have people dancing. They're playing with... Uh, uh, what do you call those things at the uh, ooh, the skirts, the Scottish wear, the kilts? Oh, yeah, the kilts. The Scottish, kilts. Scottish kilt. yeah. And now they're on a, a tour of the United States playing in different towns and selling out. It's insane. So, oh, yeah. And they've, they've gone to parks where there's no longer baseball, right? Yeah. So, yeah, he, he, those, those guys, it's collectively, it's a team. But, uh, no, it is. Yeah, yeah they, they were uh, very gracious, uh, incredibly welcoming. The fact I just turned up, I sent them an email saying so I was coming. And they're like, yeah, yeah, come. And so uh, that were great. So I got to look behind the scenes of what they do. But, you know, that that fans first, right? That that taking a customer and turning them into a fan and then you become a fan, you become a fan mm -hmm. for life. But you don't take it for granted. You've got to show them something new. So, you know, I'm all about this year for, for baseball. You'll see, we'll have a, uh, I guess, a prep band, you know, banging noise, Karen going on. I want some dancing grannies. I want all those kind of fun things. <laughs> dancing you know? grannies. And then, but we're nice. probably, our, our baseball's probably a higher level than the bananas, right? So so let's be really clear here. And that's good, really entertaining baseball, right? So it's good. Don't get me wrong, right? But but the the ABL is at a probably, uh, my view, probably high A, double A sitting in there somewhere. Some, okay. Sometimes when you'll have Brisbane going against Melbourne, it'll be, you know, it'll be triple A sort of, quality so it's a really good baseball um you know melbourne uh they play a really good brand of baseball um and 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 the owner won't mind saying this you know he's he's like you know my ring we gotta be nine innings you know we we love what you're doing in new zealand we love all that stuff but you know we're, we're pretty you know conservative and this is the way we like to do it but we like coming and playing against you and i said well that can create some rivalry because you're going to go well here's new zealand team you know they're only playing seven innings that's soft those kiwis those mm -hmm. Aussies that, you know, my team plays nine innings and we'll go, hey, you guys are kind of boring, you know. Everyone leaves after seven innings anyway. Check it out, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you can have, you can build some rubber and, and a whole lot of fun. No, no, that's, yeah, I, I hear it. So, uh, speaking of that being, uh, is, are you the first professional baseball team to represent New Zealand of any kind? Uh, we are the only baseball the team. The only, the only. Yeah, yeah they, okay. we're it. Okay, yeah. I was wondering maybe there was a team some some odd many years ago that just came. No, in. there's a few Kiwis that have played in the in the in the ABL, but never a yeah, team. Never and they've been team. invited. And uh, look, Baseball Australia, David Hines and Cam Vale, they were like, "Come on, guys, let's go. We're gonna expand the link." There's a team from Korea that comes out, yes, faces themselves in Geelong. Geelong, yeah, Geelong. yeah. So oh, look, we, we those guys are great. You know, when uh, we played in uh, in Auckland, played at home. It was, it was after Christmas. It was just after New Year's. Most Kiwis head off to their bats, you know, their holiday home, they're away. And uh, the Korean uh, community came out and supported us and them. And it was yes. really fun. Yeah, they were, they were happy uh, to, for, for, their, for, for us to win. And they're very supportive because they're now supporting a Kiwi team. But they're also supporting their, you know, their fellow countrymen as well. So it was a, it was a lovely, lovely festival of it. Uh, we had a, a, a Korean player called uh, Kim Wonsak. Anyway, he changed his name, or maybe we changed his name to Kiwi Kim, right? So, so the average 
New Zealand, we call them Kiwis. That's like a bird we have, right? So yes. you got a bird, you got oh, Puatara, yeah. any bird. So we became, he becomes Kiwi Kim. So he's now playing against his Korean mates. Anyway, he just goes on an absolute tear. I think he had two or three home runs. He's hitting doubles. He's just crushing it because, you know, he wants respect, you know. And, and he was a, a, he was the first round pick overall in Korea a few years ago um, as a pitcher. So, you know, and, uh, and he reached out and said, I want to come and play with you guys. And we, uh, he was great. So, you know, that baby shark song where everyone, you know. Oh, yeah. It, everyone, yeah. Uh, just does everyone's head in. He goes, let's put this on for my walk-up song, right? He goes, I hate it. Um, and, and remember, so he didn't speak any English. He comes out and learns English, right? Every night, learns English. Anyway, he comes out and goes, put this on. The crowd's going to love it. I mean, he was on the, he was on the money. You know, even Melbourne talk about it going, holy smokes, that crowd and that shark song. They're all standing there. Rah, rah, rah. Mm. And I kind of liked it. Maybe I'm just a little bit kitsch or a little bit weird, possibly. I don't know. You, you know what? Doing weird things at a ballpark, uh, you, you'll, you'll never see... You, most people would like that. I mean, there's folks that just want to watch the game, keep score, eat the peanuts, but you like wackiness. You like to see, because I think you have a guy dressed up in a, a, a disco outfit. A oh, yeah. So, so, so the story is that's actually my yeah. um, eldest son, right? Okay. So he goes, yeah. I said, so we Leisure had, suit. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had, so I turned up there and we got a DJ down there and he's, he's trying to educate people on music, right? And I'm like, yo, Dude, here's my phone. Plug it in. I want ACDC. I want Bon Jovi. I want Bruce Springsteen. I want those iconic stadium rock. Let's go. So, anyway, we sacked him after day one because he was like, thought I was an idiot. That was fine. Then we had you sacked, you fired him after day one. Fired him. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) He's wanting to educate people. I'm like, nah, people want to be entertained. They don't want to be educated. They want to be entertained, right? Good. This is not what they come in. So, so I'm like, yeah, you're gone. So, and then, uh, and he's probably a really good DJ. I probably didn't show him enough respect. So then the next day, then you got his um, DMC and he was, don't get me wrong. He was cool, but he was, he was kind of, he had, once again, he want, he felt that, you know, it had to be a particular level education. So I, I go, no, nah, he's gone. So put my um, elder son in there, Ethan. So I said, right, cool. You're going to be MC. He goes, I don't know anything about it. I said, don't worry. Right, go across to the costume shop, get dressed up as, you know, as, as John Travolta. Next day, you're going to be a gladiator, Russell Crowe. Next day, you're going to be dressed as a fairy. I don't care. Captain of the Navy, get dressed up. So all of a sudden, he, he gets dressed up in costume. So he's then, and he's talking to the crowd and being stupid. And also, the whole thing just kind of, and we had a, um, a school's uh, softball team that was there. So they got into it. Everyone got, and so everyone just, yo, where's the, where's the MC dressed up as? What's he going to be dressed up today, right? And so it just, and you were like, it was that classic, um, you know, if I put you in a, uh, in a dress up costume, you kind of behave like that. And it mm-hmm. becomes a sort of this, in a great way, it becomes like almost like a, um, a protection, like a shield, and you play this part, right, of, of acting. So yeah, it worked out really well. We, we've, um, we'll have him back to do it again. Mm-hmm. He really grew into that role. The fans loved him, you know, but of course, yeah, we're minor league baseball. So one day we've got the, all the kids lined up there and we're running around the bases, traditional one. And I'm in the mascot suit, right? Because, you know, my, yeah. mascot's, now the, my mascot's now the MC, right? So I'm in the mascot suit. So, so, so I then just take off, right? Because I know it's supposed to be fair that we let the kids win, right? That's traditional, right? So I just scorch these kids in the, in the Tuatara thing. So everyone's like, whoa, that Tuatara can run. So anyway, so we, 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 I probably, you know, should have been a little more sort of uh, embracing with the kids. But, but once again, you know, everyone laughed, right? Because you don't expect to see the mascot outrun the kids, right? So it's just like, what do people expect? No, you never see that. No. He and falls down. Would, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And everyone, oh, you know, I'm like, no, no, he's, he scorches the kids, right? And bang. Now, I'm no blue flash but you know i got the jump one two three gone anyway but um so the the funny thing is what we did was we just kind of go well what do they expect let's give them what they don't expect and then just add on to it add on to it and people really embraced it because they went this is fun yeah sure and 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 it's not like it's kind of fun then it kind of equal it's kind of cool right and you know as i said we're all we're doing is copying a bit from the basketball you know what what's the bananas doing right cool Right, you know what what's happening in Double A. Well, they're starting to get a little more serious there, but you know you go and see the Rough Riders out there in uh, in Texas, and you're oh, going, yeah, holy smoke! Have you seen that pool those guys have got? Yeah. And I'm like, all right. So this year, my goal is to have a spa pool. We can't have that lazy river. 
but I can have a spa pool, you know, a spa pool. Their beers. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put one of those in there. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but we're going to have one. Where? Well, I mean, I, I was looking at, I was looking at the ballpark. You got a lot of area right out there on that hill. I mean, do yeah. people do people sit out there, or would you like to put some uh, some, I guess, uh, social areas where people go drink beer and? Yeah. So we had so that, that hill you're talking about. So one thing we we sells pizza. They put a big like a banner there. Mm-hmm. So if anyone hits a home run from either team and it lands on the banner, everyone gets a free slice of sales pizza. So then we went, let's take this a step further. What about if you're a kid and you catch a home run, you get a one year's free sales pizza. Show me a 14, one year. 15, yeah, one year. Show me one 14 or 15 year old boy that doesn't think that's a good idea. So you've got 30 or 40 kids roaming around. Those and you got a hundred kids roaming around trying to catch a home run, right? And yeah, the kids, once again, like, who won? I don't know. But Adam over here caught a uh, home run ball, so he's got free pizza. He, like, he's the king of his school, right? So but what we're going to do next year is we're going to dig in the ball pens into there. So that bank, that bank, yeah, and it's yeah. very social, we're going to build the two ball pens in there. Now, we either might stack them or just go east-west across and drop it on the end. But that also will add just a bit more. So from a camera point of view, you'll see – you know, those bullpens, great for advertising, great for also our education of baseball. Because last year we had our bullpen right in behind with our dugout. So I don't know if you noticed, mm-hmm. our, our dugout, our home dugout is open. Yeah. Because once again, yeah. the, the reason for that is... It's not um, a ballpark. Yeah. So 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 I was like, well, we could we could do this. But uh, one of the guys goes, no, Vero Beach, man, it used to be open. Like the fans can see what's going on. And uh, it was Darren Braggs and Steve Mintz uh so steve Mintz is with the rangers darren was with the with the reds and goes man leave it open because the fans will then see what's going on and they'll feel that they are part of the team mm. on the field and it was it was brilliant you know the, the away they're in they're all locked up nicely they're nice and safe over there but our home team it's there so you can turn up nice and early and get a seat and you're right there by the bullpen you can almost touch yeah. you know and talk to the players the players love it but we had the bullpen sort of uh, right beside it. And so it gets a little bit messy. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. Yeah, and also when you've got a lefty and a righty going at the same time, the bullpen wasn't big enough. So, you know, mm. <laughs> yeah, someone had to stand down. So, all right, let's just move that out of there, get some space uh, and go from there. Yeah, so yeah the trials and tribulations of uh, starting a, a baseball club in New Zealand. Uh, now, yeah. you said you're not there to enter, not there to educate the fans. You're there to have a uh, good time. Uh, how was the reaction when you said, Hey, we're going to put a baseball team here. When did you start seeing some of that results of your hard work at the ballpark? Look, um, unfortunately the first year they had, they were, the, the, the park wasn't ready. So yes. they had to go out to industrial area and, you know, I felt sorry for them. The whole thing was a shambles, right? So they're behind the eight ball. Um, but so look, we were there and I'm like, I want to sell out. I want to do this. I want to do that. And everyone's looking at me like, you know, you're crazy. I said, look, I know I'm crazy. I know I'm deluded, but the best way <laughs> yeah, to describe it. You have it, to be right. Yeah. Our first, well, the thing about sport, it keeps us young, right? So what do you does. do? It like, definitely does. It keeps you young. That adolescent, right? That, that young, small boy, right? Anyway. But, um, so, uh, so the funny bit was, right. So I said, Debbie, right. I want, we got to sell out. What can we do? So she's like, well, it's going to be tough. We're going to have to build it as we educate. And like uh, baseball in America, you know, April, it's tough to get people along, right? The weather's still inclement and it improved. So anyway, that, that, that um, uh, first game, I think there was like, you know, 46 people. Someone may have had a cow with them. I'm not sure. A cow. You know, someone, a cow. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> a cow. There was three wise men. No. I think someone in a house bus. Uh, yeah, she was pretty tough. So, but the thing was, and we and we lost, right? So we had the the tragic death of Ryan Costello, That's right. uh, and we can bounce around that a little bit later. Um, but we were dealing with that. We weren't ready to play, uh, and I know you should say, well, it was a good distraction, but I don't think we were ready because most of those young guys in our baseball team have never experienced anything like that, and, and nor should they but they've been quite protected, you know? So they've been signed by the Texas Rangers. They're a professional baseball player. Mum still does their washing and then we're faced with that. Anyway, so the vibe wasn't great and we lose and and we lose those, you know, 
out of our first eight games or whatever it was, I think we were seven and one or eight and one, but you know, we're, we're, in a, we're in a hole. We got absolutely hammered. But then we start winning some games. We start getting some coverage and we've sorted out what we're doing around our MC. We've sorted out what we're doing in our promo. And every game we had another one time and it's, you know, you know, bloody, we, we uh, so Jack Murphy, um, he's with the Dodgers, a scout with the Dodgers. He's there with the Blue Sox. And we go, you know, Jack Murphy, the best looking guy in, in baseball. And he's got a great massage. Good looking, good, good, a great guy, Jack Murphy. Anyway, but if he strikes out, it's, uh, everyone gets free donuts, right? So the average, you know, Kiwi's like, what? He strikes out. So are we cheering for him or what? You know, so all of a sudden the MC starts going, donut, donut, mm. and the crowd starts doing it. Anyway, the coaches from Sydney go, yo, yo, you can't have your MC doing it, but the crowd can do it, you know. So, and Jack hits this massive home run, and the crowd goes bananas because they didn't really care about the donuts, but they just loved it. And Jack was, uh, uh, yeah, he was so gracious a- about it. So there's all these sort of trial and error, but those people that came along and, we ended up, um, I think we won four of the games against Sydney and Kim Wadsuck hits a home run in the, in the seventh innings, the bottom of the seventh, and we kind of walk off and so forth. And everyone's like, well, this baseball's good and it's a whole lot of fun. And I'm a dad on a Sunday. I can go down there and tell mum that I'm looking after the kids the afternoon, right? It all kind of lines up and works. But the, so we built nice momentum. You know, our players thank you as a fan for coming along. Now, uh, in America, that might be very normal, but in New Zealand, that doesn't happen. You know, like it's mm. here's the fan, here's the player. They don't really meet, you know, particularly around that rugby stuff. But you know, you got Steve Mintz in tears, um, you know, Darren Briggs talking to some old lady, you know, Max Brown delivering a pizza during game after striking out. And those things, I talk about that because that's the fun part of baseball. Because in Kiwis, I call them Kiwis New Zealand, it's like, I know. He's playing, but he's just delivered me some pizza. Now he's going back to go and play a game. Yeah, 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 no problem. You know, and they're like, wow, that's cool. You know, and, and so, yeah, look, we were very fortunate and we've had, you know, good volunteers, Debbie, Dale, Hannah, those guys are on it, Pandy and so forth. Um, yeah, we've been very lucky there that um, we kind of started winning and then our performance all off the field, on the field, you know, so, so I'm very much, Right, Mincy, you're the field general. You pick your team and you live and die by your selections of your team. Hannah, Dale, Debbie, Regan will worry about the off-field entertainment and you guys, but we'll need you guys to buy into it. You know, so you even got Josh Coleman, to, you know, former major leaguer. He's helping out in the broadcast booth, you know, and he's, you know, Josh is like, well, it's kind of fun, you know. So, so everybody dies into it. So, I think the turning point was winning baseball. I think that's really important. You got to have, you know, a good product, and fans need to believe that their team may win tonight. They don't have to win, but they may think, you know, with that hope of winning, you know, and no. that's kind of go from a customer to a fan and go from there. I may have dragged on a bit there. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I mean, this is, um, you know, a, I've been to a lot of ballparks. I've been to a lot of teams that have come and gone, and it's like, yeah, we're gonna put a baseball team. We're gonna have these promotions. We're going to have ticket prices. We're going to have food. You go to the stadium and it's, it's like you're at a funeral. There's nobody there. There's <laughs> place. There's some teams that don't have food. They don't have merchandise, you know, and you're wondering how the heck are you guys like not prepared for this? And that's something happening all across the United States, you know, parts of new England and in the Midwest and where people know this game, you know, this is New Zealand where, yeah, you got to kind of create something a little bit different. So you know, you're taking this foreign sport, which some people probably know of, you know, sort of like if somebody took an Australian Wills football team and, and put it here in New, York, in New York or Chicago. Yeah, you get some people that are like, OK, I'll check this out. But, you know, would you be able to get thousands of people every day, every week to see that? So it's no, uh, un- unlikely. It's, so we had um, so um, pure athletic as our merchandise and. And he set himself up a, like in the stadium. He had a shop so you can turn up and you can have a Steve Mint shirt if you want or you can have your own name on it. It'll be done within 20 minutes. It was $65 or might have been $70 to get your name on the back of it or whatever it was. And we sold between at the stadium and online, we sold $200,000 worth of merchandise. Wow. It's impressive. Team that no one knew about. Yeah, yeah. Look, and but because the price point was good, yeah. It was there. People had to walk past it to see it. 
Um, they, you know, people want to support. They love the colors. The yeah, design. the teal colors are really nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, in here in the states, it comes to food, hot dogs, popcorn, peanuts. What's it like for you guys? There is, uh, is it a little bit different, or do you try to Americanize the uh, concession well, items? So uh, we, the stadium has a supply, so it's, a, it's not quite as easy as for me to come out yeah. and go right. I need to grab this guy, that guy, and we can have <laughs> a margin on it. So I'm like, guys, I need, I, I want popcorn. I want the smell of popcorn. I want really good hot dogs. Yes. You know, I, I want, you know, big drinks. I want nachos. I want ice cream. Ooh, I, want, I, want stuff, you know, I want all that kind of cool stuff. And they're looking at me like I'm smoking something. So the first, first series, there it is, hot chips, you know, pie. And some coke. And I'm like, oh man, you guys are killing me. So I do my nut yelling and screaming at everyone, which you know kind of sometimes makes a bit of progress. And in the end, anyway, so we had these uh Fritz Wieners, so like a German sausage kind of thing. Now he would sell out every game, mm. and every game there would be a queue of 50 people line up to take his hot dog, right? So you're kind of going. Yeah, that's where we need to be at. The stadiums also said, right, we need to make some changes with you for next year because we sold more craft beer than any other sport in Auckland. So, okay. yeah. And that, yeah. So, you guys, you guys into craft beer? Oh, yeah. We're into craft beer. I'm, I'm a huge, I was been drinking craft beer for 20 years before all my friends knew what the hell I was talking about. They're like Budweiser, Bud Light. So, yeah, no craft beer. Uh, yeah, when you, it, it seems like every ball club has a local craft brewery that makes a beer for them. And I went to St. Paul, Minnesota, which is home of the mm -hmm. St. Paul Saints. Oh, just mm -hmm. up there with the Savannah Bananas with what they do. They have. So I need to interrupt you on those guys. Yeah. Do you know that they're, they're actually they're a part shareholder in us? I didn't know that. Yeah, there you go. How's one, that? Crazy one of my it? one of my favorite ballparks is uh, yeah, CHS Field. Right? It is amazing. Yeah. That in Durham in North Carolina, uh, right. abs absolutely brilliant places to see baseball at the minor league level. But yeah, they have something called the Beer Dabbler, which is about 30 plus local Minnesota beers. It's insane. Mm -hmm. And people yeah. are packed up there and you're sampling all these beers. And, you know, here in Indianapolis, where I live, we have a minor league team, AAA. They have a local brewery called Sun King. And they make their own beer for the Indians. And that's all you can get there. It's just this one type of craft beer, uh, their varieties, which I don't necessarily agree with. I think if you go to a ballpark, you should have a variety of craft beer. But if somebody's given me a ton of money to say, hey, nobody else can bring their beer in here, eh, might be hard to refuse. So so apparently craft beer is a big thing at the ball games. What kind of how many varieties can I find there? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're fine. We only had, so we had your traditional beer, you know, your, your lagers and so forth. That's the um, way to go. Yeah, and then then we had the craft beer. And so it was the stadium guys said, you've sold more craft beer than any other. Like That's the cricket going on. And you're like, holy smokes. But saying that, in fairness to them, they might, the cricket guys may have taken money from another operator and limited their craft beer down. Yes. But what it meant to me was, you know, the people were prepared to spend some money at the ballpark. You yeah, know, they'll come along, they want to have, um, a good beer, you know, so, so this is the thing that I think, think uh, I think in New Zealand, you know, you want to come along and you want to feel part of the game, right? You want to, so you want to be very close to the action and you want that action to come and talk to you. You also then you want to have, you know, a good food, right? You may not choose to eat it all the time, but you want to have decent food and you don't mind paying, you know, an okay price, not, not extortionate price, but an okay price. Beer, you know, you want a selection of beer, you know. So, you know, there's nothing worse than someone lines up at the gate, and the security guards are there, right? And they're there with their red coats on, right? And they're not going, hey, welcome. This is your first time. Like, you know, the St. Paul Saints do. They're there like, I need to search your bag, you know. And then, you know, the people have got water in a water bottle and then they empty it out like the person smuggling in, you know, a bomb or something in this water. And then they won't even go, look, Unfortunately, the rules are we can't allow to have water in, but there's free water inside. They sort of, you know, they look at people like, yeah, and sneer, you know, like, guys, yo, this is, you know, this is the first experience of coming to baseball. We need to be yeah. welcome. So, so yeah, we like to have a good selection um, and we will work on that for the coming season around um, that craft offering um, and, and who that might be, but around those kind of uh, 
but also promotion related. In New Zealand, you can't do the one dollar beers because that oh. encourages drinking. Yeah, what? I know. Yeah, I know. Crazy. <laughs> we, 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 we probably drink too much in New Zealand. That's probably Thir the problem. Thir but Thirsty Thursdays, it's like a rite of passage at all yeah, no. minor league ballparks here. Now, here in Indianapolis, we cannot have happy hour. Usually, when you get off of work, you go to a yep. bar, grab a beer for about four bucks, three bucks. And, uh, and you could do, you can have a night where you discount the beer, but you can't do a happy hour for four hours. So you have to have it the whole day. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I just get there earlier. Just stay there a little bit later and drink some beer. But yeah. So you can't do two for ones here because that encourages drinking, okay. but you can kind of, you know, like, it's a little, but no one's going to come and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of baseball. No one's coming there to get hammered. They're coming there to watch no. the baseball, right? Yeah. But then you're encouraging drinking. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's a shame because I'd love to be able to do that. Thursdays, it's $5 beers. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. So, how, how much? Great, but, how, so, so you could do $5 beers on a Thursday? No, nah, yeah. Well, it'll have to be on a cup. So, it'll have to you know, yeah. bring the volume down a little bit. But yeah, okay. we could do okay. something if, if we're not, but we got to be very, very careful that we're not encouraging yes. excessive drinking. Right? Now, how much does a beer cost at your game? Uh, about $10. That's $10. Kiwi. So, that's Kiwi. about that's about $687. Okay. Yeah, I, I can tell you here the beer, even at minor league games, are getting high. I mean, they're getting to be about eight bucks uh, for domestics, uh, maybe seven for domestics if you're lucky. Craft beer, they're hitting about nine dollars. And yeah, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I go, ooh, it's 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 because if you go to a, a bar, you're going to pay about six, seven bucks for a craft beer. In fact, after this episode, I'm going to uh, my local craft brewery. Uh, which is called uh, Four Day Ray. Fill up a growler, which is sixty four ounces of beer for six bucks. Wow! And then take it home and, and enjoy it the next two days before it goes flat. <laughs> so. Yeah, see, ki see kiwis. We'll probably take it home and smash it back, and then go back in the afternoon for another one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we must come from a whole uh, land of sailors or something like that. I, lo you know? I love that. Yeah. You know what? I'm sure there's a few guys I could take home a, a growler. I could probably finish a growler, but. Uh, at the same time, I, I want to be operational a little bit yeah. later on. And I haven't even gone to the girls yet, let alone the boys. I'm talking about the boys drinking. You wait to see the girls drink, right? They can go, they can go one for one too. Yeah. I, I tell you, New Zealand. You know, I had a, a friend. Him and his wife uh, rented. I guess they rented a camper and drove uh, north and south uh, yeah. from New Zealand just to say, "Hey, we're going to be having children soon. This is our only chance to do something incredible like this." And man, he had a time. He told me he he had a blast out there and. You know, it's one of those places that, you know, you say, hey, I want to go there one day. And then you get to that age and it's like, OK, when are you going to hop on a plane and, and fly the 13 yeah. hours, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's 12 hours from L.A. You'll be fine. 12. OK, I'm heading to I'm heading to uh, Phoenix next week. Oh, so, nice. yeah, well, we because so, we've been locked down. So in New Zealand, yeah, we haven't been able to come and go. So it's been three years since I've been seeing the, you know, the Padres, the the Rangers, so forth, and, and the White Sox. So I'm just heading over there, uh, staying with a, a buddy, uh, Gary nice. Wheelock, um, and staying with him in, in um, Arizona. And then I'll go and visit, you know, go and visit everybody and just say, hey, cool, you know, this is what we're doing for next year. You got to send us some players because our 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 relationship works that we've got to have eight Kiwis or Australians on our team, mm -hmm. and the rest. You can make up from okay. you know so, the Rangers and so forth. So it's, it's really good. So that's why you kind of get that really good quality of baseball. But what makes New Zealand very unique is is we love you know I want a Korean, I want a Taiwanese, I want some Japanese, you know, because that mixture. Because if you have too many of, of, of one culture, then you only really get that culture. But everyone wants to feel part of it. And you talk to some of those players that have been down with us, and they go, the great thing about New Zealand was it wasn't just you know there was Kiwis and there was some South Africans, you know, and then mm -hmm. Japanese guy. And so you kind of get this, this, this mix. And there's some growth as, as these young men grow as people and realize it's a bigger world that they live in. No, no, definitely. Now, have you discovered any raw talent in New Zealand that have moved on to organized baseball or? Yeah. So here's, I guess the easiest way to say is our goal also is to get a player signed every year. We want a yeah. player signed, but that, that's very, very important for us. Um, because that also tells us fans that these these players have got incredible players. So in our first year, we had um, Brandon Marklin, who got who's a Canadian, came out on his own, um, throws about 95, 96. He's with Kansas City, um, and the, he's a, he's just had come off Tommy John, yeah. but um, 
he didn't get signed because he's Canadian. You know, no one saw him. So he comes down in the ABL, starts throwing darts. And everyone's like, oh, who's this guy? Yeah. Kansas City sign him. He, uh, he, uh, he was in uh, high A kind of double A, got injured. So he's a chance possibly of, of you know, making the 40 man at some stage uh, this year, I would have thought. Uh, but I'll probably know in a week's time when I'm over in, in Kansas City. So that yeah. was that year. And then the next year we had Jared Coning, which is also a pitcher that we got, and the A's signed him. Uh, and according to those websites, you know, blogs, he's a chance of making the, the big club this year as well. So, you know, those remember that one was American, one was Canadian. But we've also had um, a Kiwi, um, Elliot Johnson signed, uh, the Mets signed him, uh, and he was a local player. Uh, young guy, he came on, he became rookie of the year last his first year in the ABL. Mm. He was kind of, I think they didn't didn't appreciate just how good the league was. You know, he couldn't throw a strike. And when he did, people were hitting at about 500 feet. So mm. he the challenge was look, you're not going to be in the team next year. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to follow these guidelines. You do all that, we'll then select you and then we'll give you that opportunity. Anyway, he became a, a a, a reliever, a setup guy, and he was outstanding. I, I couldn't tell you what his ERA, but I think it was like, you know, one point nothing. Uh, and the Mets signed him, which was great. Uh, but of course, last year, there wasn't, you know, he got injured and blah, blah. Anyway, he's back there. So we've got, and then we've got um, Kyle Gogoski. Now, he was before us, before we started. He was in double A last year with the Phillies. So yeah, we've got, and, and this year we'll have a guy, um, Jason Matthews, who was a guy come out of Auckland. Went to school in America. Uh, he was up there with uh, University of Car North Carolina. Um, he's been signed by the White Sox, mm -hmm. middle infielder, um, and, and he'll be coming back with us this year. Um, so, yeah, we, we've got that, this talent that, the, that, that under 15, you know, that, that there's a lot of talent in there. They're good athletes. Are they prepared to work as hard? You know, they look at TV and go, you know, we want to play on those fields. I'm like, well, those Dominican kids, those kids from Venezuela don't, you know, oh yeah, but we need to play 120 games a year. Those kids don't, you know, so, so it's kind of that you got to mix some of that stuff together. Um, and, and, you know, we are a long way away from the, the rest yeah. of the world, but um, we'll probably take a team being the Tuatara where we've been invited to join Babe Ruth baseball. Okay. So we'll look, be taking a team Tuatara, taking a team to that every year. And we'll also look to play in Australia as well for some of those young kids, giving them those opportunities. Yes, none of them probably will make it because that's, you know, statistically, it's just not like that. But we need to start providing some coaching. Uh, and, and Darren Braggs, uh, ex Cincinnati Reds hitting instructor and stuff, uh, played 11 years in the majors. He said, hey, look, I'm come, I want to come out, not only help you with the Tuatara at the, during the season, but help you with those pathways with those kids. So I'm like, yeah, sweet, yeah. when are you coming? Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, you're thinking about the players. You got to get the coaches. You know, yep. you got to get the hitting yep. coaches, the pitching coaches, someone yep. to help your catcher, you know, guys who have that experience. I'm sure a lot of guys would love to come and spend the winters in uh, which was your summers in New Zealand. But it, it, it is a lot of work. And sometimes you, you just got to develop and wait and just wait till that just organically produces and you're, you're mm -hmm. having some good product. Yeah, look, that's exactly right. But you've got to, you know, you find the athlete. Are they prepared to work hard and then, then give them the, the, that coaching, but good level coaching. You know, people talk about, oh, you got to practice. And you went, no, no, it's got to be perfect practice. And that's the thing that I probably didn't understand, you know, that you need to work on the skill set to make improvement. Not going out there and playing is great, but, but, but actually what am I actually trying to get out of this particular uh, training session? You know, how am I yep. going to be better? And um, so you yeah, were pretty lucky, like um, Riley Westerman, who's the farm director of the Padres, you know, he was going to come out uh, a couple of years ago and help with our, our catchers. Uh, you know, so, so you've got, there's this amazing talent that are prepared to come out and be with us for, for three months because we're pretty good hosts. You know, we're pretty laid back Kiwis. We're like, yeah, you want to play golf? Cool. All right, we'll sort that out for you. What else do you want? Oh, I want a car, All right? I there. There's a car. What else do you need? Oh, I need a, you know, I need a hotel looking over the water. Well, how big do you want the room to be? You know, so, so, but we're, we're very, the thing about accommodating. Kiwis, yeah, we're very good hosts, right? Mm -hmm. And because we're not a baseball country, we then treat every baseball person. Well, we treat people with respect, but we're like, hey, you're here to help us. So we need to make sure that you have a good time. 
And then you go back and tell 10 of your mates how good it was mm -hmm. so I can grow my fan base. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just mass, right? That's just, that's just, that's just simple as that, right? You give someone a good time, they're going to go and tell four or five people. You give them a shit time, they're going to tell 20 people. So yeah. give them a good time, you know? And no, no. There. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. A uh, couple of things before we, uh, we, we go. I was watching a video. Did you say the left field distance from home plate was 315 feet or did I misinterpret that? Yeah, I think, I think it is. About, I, it might be 320 or whatever it is. 320. With wall, yeah. With, with the wall, the wall's wow. about, the wall's about 45 feet high, I think. And it's a decent size. Yeah. About uh, 40 feet. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, um, at last time we sort of had this sort of temporary fencing that was kind of flexible and, you know, when there was a big wind, it would all fall over. So, you know, oh, we're going to go put it back up. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at making some changes around that just to finish that off for this year. And that may mean we might create with containers, but then padding on them, but containers and bring that in. So the whole park will look a little more cozy, a little more traditional. Mm -hmm. So you'll see some of that imagery and going, oh, yeah, okay, cool. There's some good progress. Yeah, um, no, definitely. It was good, but we need to, we just need a few more of those baseball things. I mean, I love, you know, I love the idea of the outfield fence goes and it comes in, it goes out and yeah. it moves in. And, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, and, and of course, you know, home runs are exciting because they are exciting, but that triple, that double, they're exciting too, because not only if, you know, you've got the ball in play, the fielders and the runner. So, you know, one hand, you know, I like a nice small park, lots of home runs because that's baseball, but also like to see, you know, a little more space that so we're seeing more action happening. No, no, definitely, definitely. And like I said, if you look at this ballpark, yeah, it does kind of jut in and out, kind of like the old Major League ballparks of the 1930s and 40s, like Ebbets Field or um, I'm thinking uh, Griffin Park in Washington, D.C. So uh, do, does the ABL ever think about maybe putting a second team in New Zealand somewhere we're down the road or is that just too far off? No, no, absolutely. There's been some conversation with yeah. that. Um, like I have a and, partner too. Uh, you know, yeah, like would, would you have another one? Because Auckland's got a population of like one and a half million people, right? So there's a lot of people there. Yeah. So you could easily split it up. You could grab one of the Japanese teams and say, hey, look, why don't you base yourself in here uh, at and, and the same time? So almost let's use the same stadium. So when we're away, mm -hmm. you're playing at home. And we go, you know, backwards and forwards. And they're not against any of those things, really. They're saying, well, okay, how would that actually work? So, look, I can kind of see the ABL should be, you know, in my mind, it should be the premier sort of winter league competition. Uh, and it just needs a bit more Asian influence, in my, my mind, a little more Asian influence in there. And then you can line up that whole broadcast and, and, and the wagering and everything else and away we go. Yeah. But, you know, you, you need to come down. I mean, so, you know, you come down. Can you sing a national anthem? Uh, not well, no. Perfect. I mean, that's exactly. Right. I don't want anyone that's good. I want someone that's really, <laughs> really bad, right? Like, wow, that guy's brutal, right? Well, I, I, yeah, I, I don't want to fed uh, all the Kiwis if I sing the national anthem but no. correctly. Perfect. We love it, right? That's because yeah. it's funny, right? It's it's humorous. Like how yeah. bad. Is it? I, I have I have dressed up as a mascot before for sporting events. So I've done things like that, and I've tossed stuff out to the crowd. So oh. that's uh, that that's. Those are all things that I really uh, enjoy seeing at the ballpark. So if you need me to do that and uh, I don't need a, a room with a view of uh, the ocean or anything, I just. <laughs> now we'll find a, like an old sort of industrial Creek that's got yeah. a few cars and stuff and looking at it. That'd be just, really nice. Yeah. Just, just give me, just, just have me uh, near a, a craft brewery so I can just walk home instead of uh, trying to drive on the opposite side and. No problem. You bring your sleeping bag. You, change, you sleeping can just bag. stay at the field. You just stay at the field. Oh, That's easy. Right? I'll, I'll yeah, stay either. at the field. That'd be great. Yes. And I, hey, so here's a funny one, right? So, so you know, we as, I guess, you know, I guess, I don't know. Just maybe, maybe it's just me, right? So I'm like, yeah, we need to have a gun to shoot out, you know, those t-shirts. That's really cool, right? I need to get one of those, right? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Debbie goes, so she's a basketball background. Now, now she's a baseball. She goes, but don't you have all those guys that can throw like with really good arms? And I went, yeah. And she said, why don't you just get them to throw the t-shirts? And I went, yeah, that's pretty clever. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm off you know, trying to get a rocket launcher to throw t-shirts. Yeah, I'm like, probably yeah, cost right, you a couple thousand. Me. Yeah, that's right. Right, you guys just throw the t-shirts. Perfect, done, easy. You know. Or well, you get the so, slingshots. You get those slingshots. Yeah, well, here. you can do that. But that, but of course, the Kiwis are impressed with how far these guys can throw right mm -hmm. so that's part of our education too is and they can do that so so one of my favorite promos was um if you're prepared to take your shirt off and swing around right whatever innings it is 
we'll get you, we'll pick, give someone a new shirt. So you get all these kids with their shirts off, you know. Yeah. And we just pick one out, go get them a shirt, all do it with a name on and stuff. There's one of those, you know, silly things just entertaining me, right? And it entertains the whole kind of, you know, just that whole out of the Paul Saints, Jesse Cole. I mean, there's numerous teams out there in America, but the same sort of, and football's really good ones to have a look at what they do. But that's that's real organic stuff that they do as opposed to that minor league baseball. Yeah. You can have a look at some of the stuff that organically happens in that English football. No, no, no. Yeah, no, you're right. Because, you know, you look at English football and they're singing the anthems. They're singing, yeah. for some reason, they all sing songs from the 1960s yeah, that I were am. like Blue Moon or You'll Never Walk Alone, which. Yeah, that's it. I, that'd be great if they did that here. I was at a Minnesota United game, and they all sang Wonderwall by Oasis after their game, yeah. after a win, which yeah. I'm thinking, that's kind of cool. I, you know, It'd be nice to have the whole crowd singing some oddball song that you know was popular 40, 50 years ago as well. So, yeah, but those yeah. things happen organically. Somebody does it once, it becomes a good luck charm. And they're doing it, you know, set four decades later. Well, it helps when you got forty thousand people turning a game. It, and it also these helps. guys are wanting to fight with these guys. I was kind yeah. of, I'm not really keen on the fighting bit. I'm more no. of a sort of hug guy, you know. We can a little hug more it pacifist. Out. Yeah, 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 that's right. I, yeah that's right. I hear yeah. you. So, so you, you mentioned some kind of promotions. What's what's your favorite promotion that you guys do at the ballpark? Oh, look, sales pizza. We do, you know, you got to dance, and it's Italian music comes on. For dancing for pizza and everyone's in the aisles oh, dancing right these couples that dance um we sing so so look that that's a lot of fun and that's that's something that that people yeah you know, and we go and give the pizza the pizza out right yeah you've won and people just and they share the pizza right um one of those things that we were doing is you know when you pick up the rubbish at the end of the thing right so instead of having cleaning crew we would just grab a rubbish bag and hand it out at the start of the the seats right at the oh, line. yeah and people would just put their rubbish in and put it down there Right? And you're like, that wasn't a promotion, but that's just kind of, you know, everybody invested in what we're doing. Instead of having a cleaning crew, let's just all clean up our own mess, right? Yeah, beautiful. So we'll move into some of that, you know, organic packaging, you know, recyclable, all those kind of things that are going on. But look, we've, I've got one next year, um, a, a promo, which I, I don't want to talk about, but yeah, it's, it's a cool, fun one. Um, so I, I like some of those kind of baseballs. I like those stories of, you know, those old timers that would, you know, almost pull their entire team off as a pitcher and go, you know, put out the heater, stamp it out and go, right, I'm going to strike this guy yeah, out. So, yeah, a little satchel so page. Those, yeah, look, that, that's right. All those come back, they're kind of cool. But but look, we we you know that when you turn up to one of our game, you've got to get greeted at the at, at the gate by a welcome, and that may be a player. You know, like next year I'm getting an electric golf cart and grab a couple of players, and they're going to drive out to the car park before the game with all their – kid on pick up people and bring them drop them off at the gate right so those people at the gate will then sit at their seat and then they'll look was that the guy that just picked us up that's playing you know so those that's an experience right and 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 you i just know that if someone experiences that they'll tell lots of people and they'll come again that's, and that's all you can ask for right there's yeah, kind of word of mouth advertising and then the last thing i, I want to uh, talk to you about uh, thank you for staying on here. This might be the longest conversation I had, but it's probably the, one of the most entertaining. Uh, Tuatara Nation, you mentioned something about a $10 monthly service. Mm -hmm. So we bought a, for the baseball fans, we bought a basketball team out there. And uh, and, the, and the rationale behind that was, you know, baseball's, uh, baseball's super cool, but I think basketball is probably the coolest sport on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and the opportunity presented itself uh, to, to own a team in the league in New Zealand. Uh, and in that league, it's an eight-team league. Uh, it's broadcast uh, from Thursdays through to Mondays, uh, and we can grow our, our our particular brand. So, so that that Tuatara Nation that just organically happened. That was the fans calling it Tuatara Nation, but that can sort of sit across that baseball and that basketball. But the idea being is, hey, you don't live in New Zealand. You live in I don't know Indiana, right? And you want to be a fan. You want to be a member, nope, right? I like our basketball here. Yeah, sweet. We, 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 we. Yeah, that's right. You've had a couple of good players. Anyway, so, 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 so you know, you want to join Tuatara Nation, right? Well, for $10 a month, that's all it is. Yeah. And when the basketball season starts or the baseball season, you get a box with some exclusive stuff in it for you. You get that opportunity to talk to Steve Mintz, our manager. You know, he has a, he has a weekly update for you guys. You guys get that until it's a special little group. 
and and I think there's um there's some um, people that would go yeah all right we'll set it up you know I just have one less beer uh, a month and for ten bucks I'll join you turkeys and uh, but but part of that is we then want to get image of say someone like you sitting at home with this stress ball and the sixth innings because we're down right photo of you mm-hmm. with with you know your chocolate whatever it is and we're going to give you South and Show. we're going to do that so. so and it's trying to grow that just outside of those ones that come to the park and see our MC and our baseball team to those fans that are at home watching on TV. So our team, our games are all broadcast in New Zealand, but then uh, on the platform, I think they'll be on YouTube and the rest of it. So I'll be able to share that with you when we start playing on that sort yeah. of stuff as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. well, so what's I'm, the time over there at the moment? What, five o'clock on a Friday night? Uh, it's six o'clock on a Friday night here in Indiana. So... Eastern time zone. So we're on the same time as New York city. Uh, wow. Probably should be on Chicago time. If I drive about an hour and a half, I'm in central time zone. Uh, to you the, know, the Chicago, the Chicago dogs. Uh, yes. They've reached out and they, they want to you know, help us a little bit. And um, Sam, oh, their broadcaster, uh, he, he's the broadcaster. He's going to come out to New Zealand and do some broadcasting with us. That's awesome. So, yeah, so, so we'll take a little bit of baseball knowledge and then we'll bring in that New Zealand enthusiasm. Like we got a guy called Watto Mark Watson and he he, uh, he knows a little bit about baseball, but he's a sports broadcaster. But of course, you know, he gets super excited and the baseball purists are like, hey, hey, whoa, 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 that's only a double. We don't get excited. We get excited about home runs, not doubles, you know. And I'm like, well, we just need that, that, that education piece. And so the purists, and then we can take care of the, the people. I was walking around. So here's one of my great stories. I'm walking around. Hey, how are you going? Blah, blah, blah. Sweet. Where have you guys come from? Oh, yeah, we're just outside of Auckland. We, we thought we'd come for a game. Why did you decide? Well, we watched it on TV, and it looked so exciting. We thought mm-hmm. we'd come for a game. We've never been to a baseball game before, but we thought we'd come. I'm like, well, if we can get that excitement on the TV, wow, we're, Imagine, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're winning half of this, right? Because we, we are selling. And go back to the original question, you know, how many people turned up? Not many to, mm-hmm. to where we are today. I don't know if you've seen, I've got, I'll send you a message on uh, Facebook or, or Messenger and, and you'll see that crowd singing uh, uh, Sweet Caroline and you'll see nice. the size of this crowd and you're like, and people go, oh, is that a rugby game? You're, nah, nah, that's a baseball game. That's a baseball game. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's right. That, that's definitely what you want to see. And speaking of Chicago dogs, I've, I've been up there a few times. That's not too far. Beautiful stadium. Beautiful stadium, cheap. They they cut their costs. They don't want people to be uh, ripped off because uh, going to a going to a major league game and for the White Sox and the the Cubs can could almost cost you a month's salary. How, uh, how much does it cost you to go to a major league game? Oh my goodness! Uh, it depends where you are. I mean, you can go to a White Sox game for you could probably get a, a cheap ticket for twenty dollars, but wow. you have to pay twenty dollars to park. Right in their parking lot. It's not in one of the best neighborhoods of town. So if you're driving, uh, you're you're going to want to park in that parking lot. Now, if you go on a Sunday, the the prices are lowered, ten dollars. Uh, they they used to have the five dollar seats on Sundays. I don't know what that's like now. Wrigley Field is don't even drive to Wrigley Field. Just park somewhere and take the L, which is their subway line. Uh, very dependable mass transit because you're going to be paying fifty. 40 to 50 dollars to park somewhere in Wrigleyville. Yeah. Right. And and those tickets are high demand because every that's a tourist attraction. When people go to Chicago, yeah. they go to Wrigley, they go to Wrigley yeah. Field, just like they go to Yankee Stadium in New York and they go to Fenway Park in Boston. So Cincinnati, which is about 100 miles away from me, you get a mm-hmm. ticket for 10, 12 bucks. You can park for five, 10 bucks, maybe. That's that, good. Yeah. Cincinnati's a it's the oldest baseball team in the, the world, but they don't, they don't get a huge, huge, uh, huge turnout. If the team's winning, yes. Uh, but you would think Cincinnati would, uh, would get a lot more people, great food down there, uh, easy to get around. So yeah, Cincinnati is a very cheap place. Pittsburgh, beautiful ballpark, very mm-hmm. cheap as well. Uh, you know, if you buy the ticket at the box office, you know, you're not going to pay some of those service fees, but yeah, some, some places, I mean, America, you know, the, the NFL tickets are, Oh. In, insane yeah insane. So we're, we're in the basketball game now so you know i'll be an expert in a month's time anyway so i thought well I'll, while i'm there i'll go and see the phoenix suns and then i looked at yeah. buying a ticket i'm like yeah maybe i'll just turn up and see the front office guys you know when they're not playing because oh, uh, it's so yeah it, it's amazing now you could always show up right before the game starts and talk to a scalper yeah 
and say, hey, I'll give you $20 for a ticket. He's so desperate to get rid of it. He'll probably I, we used to do that back in the day when uh, we didn't want to. And this is when we didn't want to pay $20 for a ticket. We would yeah. offer them something else. But yeah, there's yeah, it, NBA games can be high, too, and, and NHL mm-hmm. games. But baseball, especially minor league baseball, is still very affordable uh, yeah. to see. So I think that's why it's, it's a huge hit with a lot of people here. So saying that, when you look at the Saints and you look at Savannah, or just use those two, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Look at that, and and they are putting on a circus, right, and a show. And you know, and you're kind of going, well, okay, it's twenty dollars to go, or whatever it is, and, and and Savannah does all you can eat, you know, and the rest of it. And um, when you look at it, and you're going, it's it's value, right? And people are going, I'm giving you two hours of my life. I work for an hour. This is what it costs me. I want more than just the product. And it comes a little bit less so about the price. And we've watched here with rugby crowds that they were charging like $100 to a game, 150, 100. This is Kiwi dollars. So mm-hmm. about, about two thirds, right? Or 70% of that price. And then now they've been dropping the price as the crowds have been dropping as well, right? And you're like, well, guys, you're going to have to add more than just rugby because clearly it's not the price that's going on, it's what you're putting on. And of course, they're now doing them for twenty bucks, fifteen dollars. They were a hundred, and they're getting less people. I'm like, you need to have a, a look at this, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll be we'll be probably um, uh, twenty bucks Kiwi. So so that's about fourteen dollars for a, for a game uh, to come along. And you know, with that, you're probably going to go home with some chocolate if you're lucky. You get some pizza and a donut, and it didn't cost you oh. anything, you know. So, no. so, so you you know that you've got and with a smile on your face, your team's thanked you for tuning up. You've listened to some stupid music. You've had a laugh, you know, and you're good to go. Yeah, and it's it's a night out. And if you have children, you can let them run around in that kid zone and you're yeah, drinking your craft that, beer. Yeah, I mean, Kelly Sports, those guys have been brilliant, right? They've been brilliant. So uh, how many more we got following us now? Is this live, is it? So what are you at six? What have we got now? Have we got seven now or what? Uh, let, let, let me say, I haven't, I haven't even thought about that yet. So... I don't know. I'm trying to get people to follow me. I, I was, I had a nice little run of people following me and yeah. unfortunately, yeah, you got 2,369. I'm not sure. I had that list in front of me earlier today. So yeah. we'll, well say we picked up 69 from you guys. How's that? That's the same. All right. Thing. All right. But what I'll, I'll, I'll get Dale to uh, let our guys know that, you know, we've had a chat and have a look at what you're doing and, We'll say that you're coming down next year to sing the worst national anthem of Tour Tara's okay. ever experience. How's that? If that's what it takes me to get to New Zealand. All right. Do you like fishing? I'll do it. Not not a huge fishing. No. All right. yeah. Hunting? No. <laughs> craft beer. I craft like craft beer. beer. I like craft beer. All right. We got we got that too. We got good beaches, craft beer. And I like beaches. Good yeah, good craft beer, good food. And uh yeah. just being in New Zealand would be a blast. I don't care if if I just yeah sit around and walk around the city i'll have a blast yeah that'd be kind of cool walk, walk around yeah with your shirt off it's all pretty good, We're nah, pretty good down here. yeah I gotta, i'm gonna have to work out before i do that <laughs> yeah that's all right that's all right do you like tall girls do i like what tall girls like all the women in new zealand about six foot tall five. tall girl I, I like girls but i don't think my wife would want me fraternizing uh, she would come down be right. uh, can, she, can she pitch <laughs> can my wife pitch no no all right no. Okay, we're always looking for a little relief from the bullpen. No, no, she couldn't. That uh, you, you lose a lot of games. I don't know. Yeah, she couldn't even get it uh, across the plate. So <laughs> uh, we 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 got offered a couple of Tom and E's uh, left-handed pitches um, yeah. last year, uh, females, and uh, I was like, right, let's have a look at it. They could be really good in that situation, or particularly against uh, someone like Donald Lutz, former major leaguer with Cincinnati. He plays for Brisbane, and uh, so you know he's he's probably sitting there, you know, dialed into sort of ninety five, and if that big sweeping curveball at sort of eighty two, you have a bit of success against those guys. So yeah, we're looking at all those kind of you know additions. No. So yeah, your wife your wife's got nine months to be able to flip that ball in there. You'd be right. Uh, you know what? I she doesn't even like baseball. You know, when I drag her to baseball games, she's the one drinking the wine and the the beer, the wine slushies or the margaritas. That's all Perfect. she needs. A- Perfect. That, that's really good. Look, sometimes, you know, when we're losing, I don't like baseball either. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. All it right. just goes on for too long. Yeah. No, well, you know what? You said seven innings. I mean, there's there are some leagues that have talked about having a seven inning uh, league just because it would cut down on 
pitcher injuries and insurance costs, which is a, is a big issue up here with some of the clubs. So, oh, you you talk to you know, you talk to Mincy at the Rangers. He loves it, right? It's two hours, bang, in and out. Yeah, you well, know, I, I, yeah, I talked. Yeah, I talked to. Uh, I want to say the GM. It's a baseball team. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're out of Kentucky. They're about. They're in the Cincinnati area. The Florence yep. Yalls. I don't know if you've heard of them. No, no. They're called the Yalls because they have a red and white water tower that says Florence Yall. It initially said Florence Mall, but they were told to take off Mall because they couldn't have advertising on water towers because that was built. So they, they changed it to Yall instead of coming up with something else. So they named the baseball team after that. Right. So. Yeah, I was talking to I was talking to their uh, GM, and he was saying, "Yeah, we would like to have seven inning games." They got rid of peanuts at their ballpark because it, it's a pain in the butt to clean. He goes, "Those things are so hard to clean," and now people just eat something else instead of the the peanuts. If you oh, can wow. believe that. Oh, okay, All right. interesting. Yeah, yeah. A little, little, I keep that in mind. Well, problem is now pe- people have peanut allergy, right? So you got to. And that's peanut. another thing he mentioned: peanut allergies. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we didn't do peanuts last time, probably because, you know, we didn't quite get around to that little trick in our, bo- in our box. Right. And maybe yeah. I was too miserable to clean up the mess. Or, but or we got birds in New Zealand. They'd come and eat them. It's fine. Yeah. Or what some people do is they'll say, hey, if uh, you eat peanuts, collect the shells, put them in a bag and we'll give you a free soda or some free cheap toy for the kids. Yeah. That's something else you guys can do to help you clean up. All right. More junk toys for kids, right? Yeah. Oh. Kids, you know, you could give you could give kids like fifty type of baseball. I mean, just like little cheap plastic toys, and they'll be like, "Yeah, it's it's fun." Yeah, well, that's how McDonald's does it, right? Yeah, no, I tell you, I I'm part of those kids of that generation. Oh. Hey, mom, take me to McDonald's to get a Happy Meal. I gotta get the the latest. I don't know, California raisin figurine. <laughs> so, all right, Regan, I appreciate this conversation. I had a lot of fun. Uh, where can people find you, and and when do you guys get to play baseball again? Yeah, we just play baseball in November. So uh, we'll be November, December, and January. And if we're really lucky, we play at the end of January, beginning of February, because of the, 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 the playoffs. Uh, and that's always the goal as a team yes. is to make the playoffs, you know, and that's all you can do is make them and see where the dice fall. Um, you know, we, we like to be uh, competitive like every team, uh, but we're, we're AucklandTuratara.com. Uh, flick us a note if someone's a really bad singer and wants to come out and sing a national anthem. I'm your guy. I love that stuff, right? So Come you have that. so you have to sing bad. You can't be a good person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no point having anyone really good. Okay. Yeah. You because know? those good people were in awe of them and they're amazing. And I love those guys. But someone bad, that's kind of, that's brilliant, right? That's, yeah. that's just gonna add a bit of humor to it. All right. But unfortunately, no one sort of signed up that's really bad. Uh, but you know, that's right. We we were trying we were trying to get the American ambassador to do it in his guitar because he's a big fan of Kiss and everything else. He was a pretty cool guy. Um uh, Mark Brown, but he um, he's gone Scott Brown rather, but he's gone back to uh, America. But I wanted him to sing because uh, he played in a band, but he wasn't prepared to do that. But anyway, unfortunately, he's gone back. Well, now. well, hopefully, we'll find somebody. You got you got a few months to uh, to discover that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. There's plenty of opportunities too, yeah. so that'd be easy. Yeah, we'll be we'll be we'll be right. So so I appreciate you talking the opportunity to talk about Auckland Tuatara and, oh, yeah. and our journey. But you know, anyone's got any questions, flick us a note. Uh, we 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 are certainly keen to to take uh, everyone else's advice and, and thoughts because we're we're learning as we go along. Uh, but yeah, you know, the key thing is that we're having some fun and everyone has a smile on their face, so that's the important. But and then you win some baseball games. Geez, I didn't really talk too much about the baseball, did I? I talked no. about the other. Stuff. No, we talked right. about the other stuff. Which uh, that's Mincy's job anyway. He's the on field. Yeah, general. yeah. It's, it's, like it, you know, so I just yeah. It, I mean, you, you know, I talk to baseball people and. It's yeah, everybody knows their sport. The team's been there for 25, 50 years, 60 years. And, and here you guys saying, Hey, we're a new team. We got to do things a little bit differently. So pleasure talking with you and uh, best of luck as uh, you guys take the field in uh, November, right, which right, is well, kind of weird to say that you guys are taking the field in November. We're getting ready to start. Most teams are getting ready to start a month from now. So yeah, right on. Yeah. That's right. So right. who, who wins the World Series this year then? Well, I'm a Mets fan, so I'm, I'm a little wow. biased. <laughs> yeah, you guys going to spend more than anybody, eh? Uh, you know what? If it if it uh, results in a World Series and some winning, because the as a Mets fan, I'm, I'm done with the mediocrity of a couple good years, a World Series appearance, and then you stink the rest of you know the decades. So 
I, I want to see consistent winning. I want to see guys stay with the club. I want to see proper signings. I don't want to see bad trades. Like when we traded um, uh, Jared Kelnick to Seattle for Robinson Cano and a few other guys, I, you know, just develop players, you know, uh, you know, Zach Wheeler, there was another guy. They, they let him go because they didn't want to pay him. And all of a sudden he's a Cy Young candidate with your Eastern division rival Philadelphia. So yeah, I just want to see consistent winning. I want to see guys knocking in runs. That's one thing the Mets had a problem with. They would they would get runners on first in, in scoring position. They couldn't score. Yeah. So you have this high batting average, but you have a low run production. Yeah, and because the guy's not fast enough and so forth and whatever it is and what's happening with baseball. But, you know, you look at it and you go, you know, develop, trust your process. And if your process is developed within, cool, or develop them to be sold to trade, then that, then, then that's what you do. Stick to your strategy. Uh, and you see it's kind of, you see teams are very reactive, right? They react and they maybe that's ownership or whatever it is. But it's the same as, you know, it's, it's the marketeer versus the salesman. The salesman's going, yeah, yeah, we can do that. No problem, right? The marketeer goes, hang on, that doesn't fit with our strategy. That's not what we do. And so what is our strategy as a club? And let's use those maps. What it is as a club and let's stick to it, believe in the process and keep developing it because that'll give you longevity and something sustainable. Anyway, there it is. See, I can talk seriously when I need to. Yeah. No, well, maybe we'll have you on again sometime and we'll talk the baseball right. operations. Maybe when the, the season starts, uh, we can always revisit because this was a lot of fun. I appreciate you coming on here and, and making the time. All right, bro. All right. Safe All travels, right. eh? You too. And uh, how long are you in Arizona for? Uh, just one week. So, okay. uh, as I said, you know, we'll we'll have a bit of a mooch around there and then come back. We haven't been able to travel because we've been locked off from the world. I so hear you. You're right. It's important that I jump on. I've got to be locked up for seven days when I return. Not the end of the world. No. Uh, you know, isolate, not locked up. But um, the uh, no, it's important just to go and say, hey, you know, it's me. How you guys doing? Uh, and thank you very much for your support over the years. And this is what we're doing for your players when you send them down. Because, you know, they send me a player and I just value that at a million dollars. Each one has to be worth a million dollars, whether they make it to the majors or not. Um, so Yanni Hernandez was our shortstop and he played 40 games last year for the Rangers. So that was a, a big deal for us. So that was the Rangers believing in us. Uh, and, and remember Steve Mintz is with the Rangers. So, you know, I look at it instead of saying, you're sending me a player, I look at it and go, you're sending me this value. And I need to make sure that value is added to that when they return back to, to America. So we need to make sure that, you know, they're in the gym, they got the, 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 the right um, strength and conditioning, we've got the right nutrition, and that more importantly, that they are, grow as a person in New Zealand. So that's part of our, our sales process. Yeah, and they're exactly right. You you have to get the fans into the, the stands, but you also have to develop these players to continue that working relationship. So, all right, Regan, you have a great rest of your day, and we'll keep in touch. All right, thanks very much. Ciao. Take care. Ciao. All right, Regan, thank you for coming on, man. I had a good time. We talked. That was a good hour, and we talked even after. So uh, Regan had to go because he's actually getting ready to go to Phoenix to see some spring training baseball because, you know, baseball decided to uh, start playing again. Uh, so a little information that I, I think I didn't even say. Uh, a Tuatara is a, a, a indigenous lizard that uh, has been around for thousands of years in New Zealand. And they pick the name of uh, that animal to, you know, dignify their strength. They also went with the colors of teal uh, for the maritime imagery uh, that's in the area. And he told me that 320 to left field, that, that's like Sacramento Hughes Stadium, 320. That, that's, that's a little bit insane. That, I'm surprised the home runs are not flying out there like, uh, you know, like, you know, 10 home runs a game there. So, uh, so some other information uh, that I, I didn't say. Auckland actually did not play the 2021 season, nor did they play the 21-22 season uh, due to COVID. So they haven't played a game since March or February of, 20, of uh, 2020, right before lockdown or, or during lockdown. I'm not quite sure how that worked out there. Uh, so they're going to go almost two years without playing. So. I wanted to really ask him about how are you uh, branding the team, letting people know who you are since you're not playing. So I didn't get a chance to ask him that, but that's, uh, that's the way it goes. I listen, I had a great conversation. 
I was really looking forward to talking to somebody from the uh, Australian Baseball League. I had contacted a couple other teams. Actually, Auckland was my third team I contacted. But my goodness, that was one hell of a conversation. And that's the type of guy that I, I think I could sit down and just, you know, shoot the you know what with for hours and hours over some uh, pints. So if he wants me to come down there and sing some uh, wacky national anthem, I'll do that. And if they throw tomatoes at me, so be it. So until that happens, folks, check me out on YouTube, Ballpark Hunter. You can also check out my writings at stadiumjourney.com. And uh, why don't you give me a follow on Twitter? That's also at Ballpark Hunter uh, on Twitter. So until next time, guys, you keep safe, safe travels. And no matter where you are, there's a ballpark out there. So we'll see you next time. Take care.